Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my quest for historical knowledge here on the internet. Alright, we're going to return to Sam and Nella's channel uh, because his videos are always kind of funny and entertaining and really give some interesting stories and history that you have often never heard of. It's also one of the most requested channels that I get. and I know, um, A lot of you might have come over from, from his channel. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump into this in just a second. This video is uh, titled Animals in Space, A Brief History. So I'm guessing, you know, testing when, when you know, in the space race, when they were testing kind of the habitability and, and possible possibility for a living being to sort of go into space. Uh, many of you might know that they tested, you know, with animals, uh, dogs, monkeys, stuff like that. So we'll see if that's... Probably, maybe what what he's going to be talking about there. You never know with Sam, though, right? <laughs> All right, if you like the original video, make sure you go down to the description and give a like and subscribe over to Sam's channel, and give them uh, give him the credit that, of course, uh, he deserves with the with a great video. If you like that, and if you like what um, we're doing here, and you're not a sub, love to have you as, as a sub so you can join me on my little historical journey that we're having here. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Animals in space: a brief history. Hey kids, animal hey. test subjects have always been an important facet of science, since they allow us to study physiology in more destructive ways than we could get away with on humans. So yeah. it should come as no surprise yeah. that, over the years, there's been a lot of creatures haphazardly thrown at the cosmos against their will. Here's a bunch of smelly animals that achieved more in their short lives than you ever will. Quick disclaimer, this is by no- Does that make us feel bad? Animals that have achieved more than us. Evaluate your life. <laughs> Means a comprehensive list, not even close. We'd be here all day if it was. More so just a highlight reel of the ones I found the most interesting. So the Great Zoo in the Sky was first founded in 1947 when the U.S. launched a craft containing a bunch of fruit flies 68 oh, miles into the air in order to see what kind of horrible mutants would get made from all the cosmic... <laughs> Long leg. Hu hu weird human legs with this one. If it turns into a cow, is that what he's thinking there? ...radiation up there. Unfortunately, they were totally fine, so the Earth was like, hey, living things can go into space and not die instantly. So that was the, one of the earliest um, big concerns in the beginning of the space race. You can see how quickly we're starting. We're starting with rockets, you know, less than two years after World War II ends. But it was the, the radiation, right? Going up there beyond kind of the protective uh, uh, shielding we have from, from the deadly radiation. Um, from space and was one of the scariest things actually because um, they didn't quite know uh, if if human or if life could react to that that it would uh, die who get radiation sickness radiation poisoning and it was one of the yeah the biggest things amongst the the long list of potential things that can kill you in space travel supple and the next year fine so the earth was like hey living things can go into space and not die instantly supple yeah. and the next year they decided to send up a rhesus macaque named albert which it seems kind of like jumping the gun albert. to go from barely alive specs to basically it's a, a big person jump. in one step poor albert that's a, that's a that's a big risk going yeah from mosquitoes to him um I wonder if right if 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 this was something that people protested all because you know about animal testing that gets that gets um, protested a lot to to risk these sort of things. But I don't know what do you put between flies and Albert? <laughs> what do you what do you put there? Guinea pigs or something? If it were me, I would have thrown like a frog or a gerbil in between there, but whatever, I'm no gerbil. cosmopolitan. Anyway, Albert died of suffocation on the way up and wow. never really made it to space alive. Fun fact, this rocket was actually a V-2 stolen Albert. from the Germans after World War II. So just in case any of you have any sympathy for those Nazi characters, they're technically responsible for the death of a poor innocent space monkey. Pretty condemning, if you ask me. But I guess the U.S. felt pretty bad about say. it, so they decided to deal with their grief by naming the next monkey Albert II. Pretty unhealthy coping mechanism, according to my shrink, but she also thinks Punk is dead, so what does she know? This Albert actually made it into space alive through a grand effort incorporating all the incredible cutting-edge technology that the Atomic Era had to offer. And after all that... They goofed on the parachute, so Albert II turned into a fine red mist on impact, which just goes to prove... Let's get another 07, this time for Albert too. So he survived the suffocation, but not the re-entry. What did they say it didn't have the ship, or the the, the craft didn't have um, any parachute either? 
goofed on the parachute, so I think that the atomic era had to Go offer. And after all that. They goofed on the parachute, so Albert II turned into a fine sure. red mist on impact. That which just goes to prove the age-old adage, you can lead a monkey to space, but you can't make him land. <laughs> there were a few more Alberts after this. Albert III fucking exploded. Albert IV made it up, but he had another tissue paper parachute what don't work for hex. Oh no, all out. the Alberts! Albert V, yet again, bad shoot, liquefied on impact. Three. Until finally, in 1951, on Albert number 6, they figured out how to make a big blanket that consistently makes you not immediately die when you fall from the sky. <laughs> and the monkey was recovered alive from the capsule alongside his 11 mouse roommates. Of course, he died two hours later, but hey, still counts. Oh. Hey, that's... Another 07 for Albert 6. They brought mice with him, and he did it just, I mean, it just messed him up. Probably on the way back, he couldn't couldn't handle it. Oh no. Doggos in space? Alongside his 11 mouse roommates. Of course, he died two hours later, but hey, still counts. Earlier that same year, Russia launched two little pupniks named Tsigan and Dizik, both of whom came back unharmed. These two were the first vertebrates to ever leave Earth and come back alive. Then in 57, the Reds snagged another achievement by putting the first living thing into orbit. Besides the bacteria clinging to Sputnik 1, but they're losers, we don't talk about them. Specifically, yeah. they mm -hmm. launched one brave and daring dog from the streets of Moscow, probably the most famous animal to ever go into space. You know its name well. That dog is, of course, Airbud. Unlike those other guys we <laughs> talked about, Laika was never planned to be recovered intact since we barely knew how to put something into orbit by this time, let alone bring it back. But they still wanted to make sure she was, stayed alive. So, okay, so the first orbital mission wasn't wasn't necessarily planned for re-entry. Um, you notice, too, how, um, and this is true about the space race, all the early milestones were Russian victories, um, for sure. Uh, first put an animal, they're going to be first to put a human, um, and then with, with orbits and all that stuff. Um, the Americans did not really beat the Russians in very many, uh, any, any parts of the space race, just putting a man on the moon, but almost every other milestone, even later on, like uh, putting something on Mars and sending something there, like these were Russian achievements, so... That is something if you didn't know about the space race, that the most memorable part was putting on a moon, but most every other milestone... Um, Soviet Russia uh, claims that as a, as a first. I've long enough to at least reach space, so let alone bring it back. But they still wanted to make sure she stayed alive long enough to at least reach space. So before the mission, they put her through the most rigorous canine space camp that Russia had to offer. Throwing her in a centrifuge for a while to get her used to G-force, making her cage progressively smaller to get her used to cramped spaces, which made her just not shit anymore at all, but that's a different story. They also switched her diet to a special high nutrition gel that she would have eaten after takeoff, you know, had her brain not crapped out from overheating within the first few hours. In 59, the US strapped two monkeys to the nose cone of a Jupiter missile and actually got them back alive afterwards, which is crazy mostly because these things withstood 38 Gs of acceleration. For context, that's the force that makes even trained pilots lose consciousness times four, or this thing times 12, or roughly the same Jeez. forced experience when you realize that's not a normal speed a champ, bump, but one of those evil tiny that. ones that ruin your life. You know the ones. Well, that's what you get for doing 25 near a hospital, Sam. Well, hey, good thing I'm already here considering the ballistics test that just went down between the roof of my car and my frickin' skull. Jesus. So in 61, we right, graduated Sam. from monkeys to great apes, sending up a chimpanzee named Ham. Remember Space yep. Chimps? Heard of Ham. Yeah, it was that. Ham frame famous. for frame. Andy Samberg and all. What's special about Ham is that he was actually trained to pull levers and slap buttons while up in the ship, being rewarded banana pellets for completing tasks and getting his feet tased whenever he messed up. Aww. Sounds like a cartoon, I know, but I promise it's for real. Meanwhile, the Soviets were busy putting a Fury? big, bald, smart ape into orbit. No big deal. France saw the US Fury and Russia gang. sending up monkeys and dogs First until left space. out, so in 63, they launched a cat into space, and we're like, yeah, that's cool and unique. I'm one of the popular kids now. In 68, the Soviets saw the rabbit making rice cakes on the moon and said, hmm, how about a tortoise for that hair? Launching two of them into deep space, all the way Why? around the moon and back to Earth, where they were recovered alive after their capsule landed in the ocean. Kind of cheating when you are your own crash suit, <laughs> yeah. but an impressive feat regardless. In 73, we put mummy chogs in space. What's a mummy chog? It's one of these things. Like a fish, but real rough and tumble. Tolerates low oxygen, weird pressure 
pressure, high salinity, dishwasher safe, energy star rated, you name it, sister. At first they could only swim in circles, Champion. but after a couple weeks, they actually Fish. adapted to zero G and figured out how to maneuver properly. Even more interesting, Smart. we also brought mummy chog eggs. And when these hatched, the little mummy choglets knew how to swim in zero G immediately. Kind of spooky, honestly. That same mission also sent up some spiders who managed to spin some webs. Trash webs, mind they you, can, but they, hey, can, they manage. Spiders, you can keep them in space. We don't, we don't. I know we need them, but we, I don't want them. In 78, The Muppet Show aired Pigs in Space for the first time. In 85, we cut off the arms of a bunch of newts and sent them up to see if they grow back the same way. The reasoning behind this being, if a newt can't grow stuff back then, an astronaut with a paper cut probably can't either. Fortunately, yeah. they rearmed themselves at the normal rate, so all is good on that front. Around the same In time, NASA speed. actually had talks with Sesame Street about sending Big Bird up on the space shuttle as a publicity stunt. This is real. The plan ultimately fell through after they realized Big Bird is fucking giant giant and unwieldy at all times, literally the worst possible choice for a celebrity cameo on a space shuttle. So no instead kidding. they sent a school teacher in his place. And then the Challenger fucking exploded. Mm. Let me reiterate, there is a timeline not too far from this one, where Big Bird is a casualty in the single worst astronautical disaster in oh. history. A tiny evil part of me all- It could have been Big, Big Bird, but it was a school teacher. That hits close to home. I remember when I was real little, um, you hear about the, the the challenger um that going up and it was like you know the, the biggest one of the biggest um i guess failures in a way because it you know it's a space shuttle going up and it was televised and you know exploded live on air for people to see and it really yeah hit the the, the um kind of hit hit space exploration hard because i think a lot of people were thinking that we were kind of past a lot of those failures that that space launches and stuff like that was was becoming like routine now but i mean nasa and anyone will tell you there's nothing routine about putting something into space so i mean that was a truly tragic event with all those um astronauts dying in that so Almost wishes that happened. Like, that's just so indescribably absurd. In the early 90s, we set up some baby jellyfish to grow up in space just for laughs. They figured out how to maneuver just fine, but when we brought them back down, they literally didn't have a concept of gravity and couldn't orient themselves properly in their new environment. Which, being a jellyfish is the easiest thing there is. You just kind of exist, maybe squirm a little now and then. So when you manage to somehow mess that up, you know things have gone seriously wrong. In 2003, the US sent up a bunch of invertebrates, including silkworms, spiders, carpenter bees, and harvester ants. Whoops, they exploded. In 07, some tardigrades went up, totally exposed to the vacuum of space for 10 days, which, surprise, surprise, they were fine. On that same mission, a cockroach gave birth, creating the first organism that we know of to ever have been conceived outside of Earth. And finally, in 2018, Elon, Elon Musk sent a big basket of mice to the International Space Station. Just, you know, because he can. So those are just a handful and of a God's car. creatures who got and to car, experience right? the majesty of not knowing up from down. If you're like me, you're probably a little jealous. Why does an ugly ape get to go into space, but I don't? I wish to bear witness to the music of the spheres firsthand in a way that a lower creature could never appreciate. <laughs> you know why you feel like that? Because you're a nerd. And what better way to fill that space-shaped space in your shriveled Everyone nerd heart than a vast nerd. collection of high-quality documentaries? That's why you need to try Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream was founded by the dude behind the Discovery Channel, and it's an absolute treasure trove if you're someone like me who feeds off useless knowledge like As a, a loach sucking algae off a fish tank. And with over 2,400 titles, a lot of which are Curiosity Stream exclusives, it'd be hard not to find something that interests you. I personally recommend Deep Ocean, The Lost World of the Pacific. There's some freaky things down there like basically aliens the whole thing is just one massive trip Ocean you can get scary. unlimited access to their full library for just $2.99 a explored. month i know it's a cliche but that's We've literally less than like a, a cup of starbucks it. coffee a month also you can get your first 30 days completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella and use promo code salmonella during the sign up process anyway that's all for today till next time i'm salmonella and i still don't know what ligma is all right another great history um uh salmonella history video so yeah I, I i knew about ham and not as much about some of the other specific things especially the progression of life forms starting off with what flies and stuff and then moving straight to dogs and how many you know unfortunately died along the way and some of the other tests um and some of them being more modern i wasn't sure exactly what was happening with some of those more modern ones all the way to uh last year 2008 was it 2018 elon musk put you know mice up there to the international space station so hopefully someone's watching them they're not crawling around up there getting into machinery right 
All right. Well, that was good. Yeah. Hopefully, I, was, I mean, I didn't add much to there. Hopefully, I mean, I, I talked about the space race a little bit with, with um, the Soviets, again, kind of leading the way in a lot of these experiment, uh, experimentations. So, I mean, that plays its its role in history, too, because all that they felt was necessary. It's just it's small steps when it came to um, space exploration until, I mean, we're, it's, we're going and we're still going. And, I mean, there's no real end in sight, depending on what the, what's the p- furthest possible, you know, you can get people to travel, people, you know, specifically. So we'll see what's going on with that. It's something that's really interesting. I mean, I'm really interested in astronomy, and the, a lot of the space travel stuff is really fascinating to me. Um, I like studying it on my own. It's uh, good to good good to learn about, and really is cutting edge technology um, of all the different technological developments out there. So awesome! All right, well, hope you had some fun just checking this out with me. Um, learn a little bit about the again about the space testing, and yeah, awesome! All right, make sure if you like the video, go down to the description and give Sam a like and subscribe if you have not, or at least the very least a view, so he gets credit there. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Um, if you'd like to be part of our live streams and uh, live premieres, make sure you enable those notifications so you know when the live streams go up. If you'd like to be a part of our history community, make sure you go down below and click on the link to join our Discord. Um, got a great community going on over there. Thanks to everybody supporting the channel, and we'll go ahead and we'll see you next time. Bye.